In a blow to LGBTQ rights, the conservative majority has also ruled businesses have the right to refuse services for same-sex weddings. Supporters say it's part of every American's right to free speech, while critics say it's a license to discriminate. News 13's Kimberly King has the story. A Denver-based web designer cited her Christian beliefs. The Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three along ideological lines. And while this technically only affects laws in Colorado, critics say it has nationwide implications. Future cases and the reality right now is that we are seeing an unprecedented level of attacks on LGBTQ rights in the courts. That from Jasmine Beach Farrar, director of the Campaign for Southern Equality based in Asheville. The majority ruling written by Trump nominee Neil Gorsuch could give businesses more leverage in refusing services to gay couples. I don't think anyone could deny that the Supreme Court has become highly politicized. The ruling strikes down a Colorado law that forced businesses to treat same-sex couples equally. The First Amendment envisions the United States as a rich and complex place where all persons are free to think and speak as they wish, not as their government demands, meaning government should stay out. I have done gay weddings in the past. Serena Driggers owns a bakery in Cashers. She wouldn't turn down a gay couple, but says she'd lay out her Christian beliefs. I'm just taking a stand for what I believe, and that's that marriage is between a man and a woman. And if you come into my bakery, you are going to feel loved. You're going to feel the love of Jesus. Are you happy that there are more conservative Christian judges on the highest court in the land making rulings like this? Absolutely. I am. We are living through a time where we're seeing an extremist agenda pass laws at the state and federal or an attempt to at the federal level that infringe upon basic American values and rights. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor said that the decision marks gays and lesbians for second class status and also stigmatizes them with a right to deny them services. Two important rulings today from the U.S. Supreme Court. One involves a Colorado Christian graphic artist who wants to refuse business from same sex couples. The second strikes down President Joe Biden's plan to forgive billions of dollars in student loans. We have team coverage of this afternoon's rulings, starting with News 13's Rex Hodge. He went to Western Carolina University today for expert analysis and reaction from students. The conservative justices in a 6-3 to three majority ruled that the Biden administration is overstepping its bounds with proposing a student loan forgiveness program, saying it needs congressional authority to do that. The decision resonates on the campus of Western Carolina University. I mean, I was planning on going to law school, which I know is very expensive, so I'm kind of bummed out. Morgan Raffanello is transferring to Cullowee from New Jersey. She sees how it may all add up. I'm going to have to be probably paying loans back for the rest of my life. The expense can come with a cost. I think it might make things harder for students to actually get an education. The forgiveness program would have canceled ten dollars to $20,000 in federal student loans based on income levels. 26 million people had applied, 43 million would have been eligible. The cost estimate was $400 billion over 30 years. The 2003 HEROES Act allows modification of federal student loans during national emergencies. Payments were put on hold during the pandemic, but the Supreme Court says that authority doesn't include full cancellation. And they say, look, this doesn't mean that you can just go ahead and unilaterally get rid of this much student loan debt. WCU political analyst Chris Cooper says the case. This is another decision right on partisan lines. Comes down to power. When it comes to the purse strings, that that's in the hands of the Congress. This was the Supreme Court saying, hey, presidency, executive branch, got a little bit too far. We need to rein you back in a little. This is really a congressional decision. Yeah. Morgan Raffanello says the optics of forgiveness looked good, but she was skeptical it would work out, also aware of other perspectives. It's not really fair to all the other people that have had loans. Like my dad just finished paying off his loans. I am considering. President Biden says the fight is not over, pledging an alternative student debt relief plan, temporarily removing default risk. It would have been nice, but I didn't think. Nothing's free. Repayments are set to begin this August. As a law enforcement officer, we're, we're in some dangerous times. Five men face various gun charges after a shooting this week in Rutherford County. As News 13's Hannah McKenzie reports, it's just the latest example of gun violence in that county. 
All but one of those men are now out of jail. One of the suspects only spending about three hours behind bars. A rash of shootings in Rutherford County. Sheriff Aaron Ellenberg telling us a lot of the crime taking place within city limits, but the county's had its fair share of action in recent weeks. The big city stuff's coming here and we, you know, and, um, been born and raised here in Rutherford County. This is um, very abnormal for what we're used to. The most recent Tuesday when five men were arrested. Shots were fired, um, officers arrived on the scene, uh, was able to get a good vehicle description. Delandis Card, Jonathan Campbell, Tyshawn Hampton, Shaquan Hampton, and Tarandis Hampton, all charged with carrying a concealed gun. Additionally, Tarandis Hampton, charged with resisting an officer, and Shaquan Hampton, charged with assault by pointing a gun, discharging a firearm, assault on a female, and possession of firearm by a felon. No one was injured, but the uptick in shootings unnerving, says Ellenberg. As far as crime trends in the area, what have you noticed? Well, you know, with the crime trends in the area, you know, with... Um, not just Rutherford County, but surrounding counties, state, um, worldwide, um, uptick in the drugs. Um, I think the drug issue has went out of control and has caused um, people to not make the correct decisions. And unfortunately, it results to firearms a lot of times. So you're saying the, the increase in, in drug use has kind of stemmed onto this increase in firearm crime? Yes we're gonna to have to get a control of it. According to the latest numbers from the Sheriff's Office, in the first five months of 2023, deputies have seized more than 24,500 grams of narcotics. That's about 54 pounds of drugs.